we're all one family on the street and Kim is a, a tremendous testimony. And um, I was with him yesterday in recovery. So I'm gonna share a little bit about Tim's journey and my hope is to encourage other people. And uh, inside the recovery center, we were reading the comments. So leave, leave a comment for Tim or leave a comment for me. Like the video and uh, praise the Lord. 32 days today. So I'm gonna set up and uh, we'll do a quick video. It's pretty cool. There's uh, these, these two guys came by and uh, they said, what are you doing? I said, I'm a Christian street outreach worker and I am um, gonna do a teaching on the prodigal son, a lot of prodigal sons and daughters out there. And uh, they actually thanked me for my service. It's pretty cool. So I bet like this morning I was ministering to the law enforcement, resource center, drug addicts, homeless, people with mental health. I don't limit myself just to people in addictions. Um, and you shouldn't either. You know, we're the salt and the light of the earth. When the opportunity for our hope, we always give an account. And uh, great day today. All right. So he's got 22 days clean. Now, if you, I'm going to do is, what I figure I'm going to do is, I'm going to show you the first day that I met Tim. So right now, like viewers will pray for you online. I'll post it. Yeah. So know. explain your tattoos. What are they? Uh, I just basically have, uh, I mean, mo most of it is, you know, stuff uh, I got when I was younger in prison. Right. Um, a lot of it just because it looks cool, right. per se, but, right. you know. Um, How much time do you spend? Uh, well, I, I did a couple of bits, but um, I, I did uh, four years, eight months was straight. But Jesus loves you. Yeah, thank you. I'll pray for you. Once yeah. You have the Lord's Prayer. Let's see it. So you're a Christian. Well, I mean, I'm not officially, but yeah, I, like I follow Christianity. Right. right. So yeah. you have the Lord's Prayer right on your necklace. Yep. That's yeah. awesome. And the cross. And the cross. Yeah. All right, I'll pray for you real quick. All right. So that's when I met Tim. And then I don't know if you can. It's going to be loud because we got the the water the water droplets, eh? I don't know. Hopefully, you can hear me. Here in Canada, here I live on the west coast. All right. So the west coast. They call the wet coast. So, what's it talking about? We're going to do, so that was when I met Tim. All right, so I'll share a bit of a quick testimony. I was doing my street outreach. So I was walking along. And I saw Tim. Now, usually, I have street credit, right? So, and when street credit is that people know me before... I know them. Word of mouth on the street. I'm a street outreach worker. So when you're providing people, helping people, if, you know, people know my name. They hey, hey, Brother John. <laughs> Who's this guy? <laughs> so people know who I am. And, um, you know, I fit on the street pretty good. But I didn't, I had never met Tim before. That was the day I met Tim. I was like, oh boy. And that's the other thing is I don't just run around and talk to everybody on the street. You gotta use wisdom on the street, all right? You know, because, you know, this is a street, all right? Anyways, I saw him and I actually walked right by him. He's all tatted up and he's actually bigger. I'll put a picture, he's actually bigger than I am. I'm just a little guy. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, but I got, a, I got a heart of a lion, all right? So I'm just a little guy. So I look at this guy, whoa boy. I was walking by and I said, whoa boy. So I walked past him and then, you know, I felt like I got to go talk to that guy. So, oh boy. so I, I kind of shrugged it off. I, I did a couple more steps, but it was impending. One sec. Have a great day. So I said, uh, all right. So I was walking by, I actually went a little further and I was like, no, I need to go talk to that guy. So I came up to him and I said, uh, how are you doing? My name is brother John. Christian street outreach worker. Is there anything I can do to help you? Right away, we hit it off. Right away, I knew, I was like, yeah, it's a good thing I'm talking to him. Turned out he had the Lord's Prayer in his necklace. And that morning I said, are you hungry? He's skin and bones, hadn't eaten. So I took him to McDonald's and I got him hotcakes and sausage, orange juice and coffee. <laughs> so I filled him right up. And you know, it's amazing. I absolutely believe that the Holy Spirit, it says that in the Bible that the the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Now, I hadn't been to the hospital probably a month. 
I do a lot of outreach in the hospital, but I decided to go that way. I went up to the hospital, I was walking through the hospital, and then I found Tim. So this is this video. What? So this is my good friend, Tim, and he's at the hospital because... Detox. <laughs> he's in detox. It's a miracle that I saw him because I was, uh, you know, I, it's interesting. I just was headed up the hill and I decided to pop in the hospital. I never know who I'm going to run in. <laughs> I literally walked into Tim. Yeah. I was so happy, bro. He's, he's my, we've been praying for my brother. Look at him. He looks healthy. He spent time in the same prisons and uh, he's a young man. He's in his 30s. Yeah. The older I get, the younger my everybody birthday, looks. Your birthday's in like a week. <laughs> <laughs> Your birthday's in a week? Yeah. Oh, how old? 33, right? 37. 37? Yeah. Oh, okay. You're a young man. Anyways, um, praise the Lord. I want to, uh, I just took him out for some food in the hospital, and uh, I'm off to my next spot. I was just saying to him, it's a miracle. Most, every time it happens, people that I do ministry outreach with uh, get off the street, get into housing, get into detox. Every time it happens, it's a miracle. And every time it happens, it always surprises me who... You know who gets into treatment and uh you want to say anything last i just want to say thanks to brother john you know he's a miracle worker he does great work and you know people you know follow this guy and listen to what he has to say <laughs> you know? thanks buddy praise the lord bless you that's the first one that you put first yeah. timothy yeah. what does it say it says paul an apostle of christ jesus by command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Took him in the cafeteria, bought him some fancy food, sat with him, prayed with him, encouraged him, and gave him a Bible. And um, it was a special time. He was very frail. He's going through detox. It's a heart detox, medical detox. He's uh, hooked up to IVs. And um, make sure you leave a comment for Tim because he watches these videos. He's very, he's encouraged not only me, but Tremendous amount of people Tim has encouraged with his testimony. Anyways, this is the this is the video. It's only 20 seconds that I took yesterday in the recovery center. This is my buddy Tim, and uh, he's in the treatment center. He's doing well. And how many days he got? 31. 31 days. 31 days. Praise the Lord. Yeah, you betcha. All right, we'll take some. Can well, I... thanks to all my support and I'm John gonna... and my mother and my family and my girlfriend. Be here without I'm gonna post this on my my prayer group and on Facebook, etc. Betcha. All right. Hundred percent. But so continue to pray for Tim. Twenty two days recovery is one day at a time. It's a lifelong process that you know Satan. That's Satan is at the door. All right. The temptations are at the door, and just like life, we have to walk down the narrow path. Where there's freedom and life, an abundant life, filled with hope. And God has prepared good works for us so we should walk in them. It's 32 days. It's an absolute miracle. From death's door, we're in a crisis. The drugs are very toxic. So to get Tim off of the street, into detox, and into recovery, and now 32 days clean, is a miracle. And it's not, it's not the norm. Here, I was just talking to law enforcement this morning. And um, they were taking down, we have an explosion of homelessness. Anyways, I said, we, in this little area that I'm at, guess how many beds we have for detox? We have four beds. In that recovery, there's only two recovery centers for men. There's other women ones that are, uh, there's different recovery centers that are, uh, you, the government will pay the cost there's, I believe he said there was 25 beds. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of people across Vancouver Island. There's a million people here. We need more beds and uh, praise the Lord. All right, but the number one thing, all right, the number one thing is the life-changing power of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. All in with this is that I said to Tim, I said, Tim, I said, I don't have to convince anyone that there is an evil presence on this earth, a demons or, or Satan. Tim's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> and I said, God loves you. I said, he sent his son to die for our sins. We do not have to go to hell for eternity. There's a lake of fire, a consequence for rejecting Jesus as your Lord and Savior. 
And uh, you know, I give it straight, right? You have to understand the bad news in order for you to understand the good news. You don't have to go to hell. In fact, Matthew, what is that? Matthew 25, 41, Jesus will say, Depart from me, you who are cursed into eternal fire, prepare for the devil and his angels. All right? Hell was created for Satan and his angels. I hope you can hear me. It's kind of drip. There's a lot of the, the water droplets. Anyways, um, I said to Tim that, um, praise the Lord, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, the gift of God is vida, life, and life through Christ Jesus our Lord. The gospel that Paul preached, found in the book of Corinthians, that first importance according to the scriptures is that Jesus died for our sins. If you go to Revelation 14, 6, and 7, it's a three-angel message that the eternal gospel is to fear God and to give Him glory. Right? It's found in Revelation 14, 6, and 7. And of course, we have our King, Christ Jesus, in Matthew 24. Is that 14? 24, 14. That, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be proclaimed as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. All right? So, when you see the abomination of desolation spoken by the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. We're living in very serious times right now. Explosion of homelessness, drug addiction, immorality. We're, ha we're at the door of the greatest economic collapse of our life. I truly believe that. All right? Not only that, we have supercomputers, artificial intelligence. We have wars, rumors of wars, new pestilences, new diseases. All these things, we have an explosion of false... I'm going to do another video right now. If you're new to my channel, I call out false prophets by name. I'm going to do another video right now. Explosion of internet false prophets, time traveling, going into convulsions, and a tidal wave of false prophecies, horoscopes, all right? Omen reading, necromancy, it's called grave sucking. It's what I do on my free time, I expose the false prophets. Now is the day of salvation. All right, I'm done with this video, and um, praise the Lord. I was thinking this morning that, and like a reader, right? We are filled with joy and eager expectation of the return of our King. We remind people of the bad things in the Bible, the judgments of God, the tribulations and trials and sufferings that are guaranteed as Christians in the Bible. Because it points us to our eternity with our King. Praise the Lord. All right? You'll never hear the prosperity gospel on my channel. That you'll never have suffering. Because not only has it been granted to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for his sake. All right. You find that book of Philippians. It's called the book of joy by the Apostle Paul. Luke 15. Lots of prodigals out there. You know, it's interesting that when I was in the back alley, when Tim or people that have walked away, the prodigal sons and daughters, they forget who they are. I had forgotten who I was. I think there's a lot of people that have forgotten. They've gone to Bible college, maybe once in their life were serving the Lord. They've forgotten. They've, they've hooked their brains into a machine, watching all the entertainment, all the distractions of life, maybe addictions, whatever addiction it is. I think people have forgotten who they are. And um, praise the Lord. I can't, it's pretty dark in here. There we go. Luke 15, and he said, there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to the father, father, give me the share of property that is coming to me. And he divided the property between them. Not many days later, the young man gathered all that he had and took a journey to a far country and there he squandered his property in reckless living. And when he had spent everything, a severe famine arose in that country, and he began to be in want. Like the video? More people see my videos when people like them, right? Need. So when he hired himself out to one of the citizens of the country, he sent him into the field to feed the pigs. And he was longing to be fed with the pods that the pigs are. Eight, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, how many of my father's hired servants had more than enough bread? But I perish here 
with hunger. I will arise and give to my father, and I will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me as one of the hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But while he was still a long far off, his father saw him and felt compassion on him. Praise the Lord. And he put a ring on his hand. No, wait, one second here. And when he arose, he came to his father. But while he was still a long way far off, his father saw him and felt compassion and ran and embraced him and kissed him. And his son said to him, Father, I have sinned against I have it against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring quickly the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and should his shoes on his feet and bring the fatted calf and kill him and let him eat. Let us eat and celebrate for my son that is dead is now alive. He was lost and now found. Praise the Lord. And they kept begin to celebrate. Now, this is interesting because the, son, the other son, <laughs> you know, when somebody comes out of drug addiction, living in a back alley, eating garbage, we as a Christian church have to embrace them, support them with love. All right. And remember, nobody's perfect. All right. We all, all have fallen short of the glory of God. And, um, all right. Now the older son was in the field, and as he came and drew near to him, he heard music and dancing, and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said to him, Your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has received him back safely and sound. And he was angry and refused to go in. His father came and entreated him, but he answered his father, Look, these many years I have sent you, served you, and sent, and never disobeyed your company. Yet you never gave me a young goat that I might celebrate with my friends. But this son of yours came, and he devoured your property with prostitutes, and killed the fattened calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and that what is mine is yours. It was fitting to a celebrating glad. Your brother was dead. Your daughter was dead. Lots of sons and daughters on the street. And it's alive. He was lost, but he is found. Praise the living God. Praise the Lord for the prayers of the moms and the dads, the grandmas and the grandpas. I have a Facebook group. You're welcome. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to join up. If you don't have Facebook, I have a newsletter. In fact, I'm going to probably, actually, I'm going to use this as my new newsletter video. I always try to post some fresh pictures in my newspaper or my newsletter. It goes out once a month. It's on my website. You can sign up. That's it. Thank you for watching and uh, have a great day. So may the Lord bless you, keep you strong in the faith. And always remember, Brother John loves you. Bye.